The witch doctor had been working on the sick man for some time, but he wasn't improving. And then the uncle of the sick man asked a missionary to come pray for him. What happens next is totally amazing. You'll hear about it next on this episode of Stories of Faith. Hello and welcome to this episode of Stories of Faith. We've got some really good stories for you on this episode. You'll want to stay with us for the whole program. But first, let me welcome my associate, Sayuti Rodriguez. Sayuti, you're joining us via video link in Mississippi. How are things going out there? Oh, they're going very good. God is blessing. Yes, you and your husband recently moved from Oregon to Mississippi to continue their, your ministry out there. And you have uh, have one or two churches, is that right? Two churches, yes. Very good. Well, we are going to share some stories today, Sayuti. I have one and you have one that talks about the incredible power of God, something totally amazing. But before we get into them, we have a text for the day. Would you read that for us? Sure. It's beautiful. And it's found in John chapter 14, verse 1. This is what the Bible says. He who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do because I go to my Father. That's amazing. Jesus has given us the privilege of working with him for the salvation of souls. And in doing so, sometimes we see the most miraculous, amazing things happen. Things that are what you'd expect to see in biblical times. Isn't that right, Sadie? That's right, yes. Yeah. Now there's a story that I wanted to share right off the bat that was just incredible. And I just recently came across it. My friends, their names are John and Natalie Wood, work for a ministry called Jesus for Asia. And they're trying to reach the people out over there. And they have a newsletter. And so I recently came across one of their newsletters and I was like, whoa, this is an amazing story. I've got to share it with our viewers. So I asked for his permission and he said I could. Uh, this happened in the country of the Philippines. And you know, Saidi, in the Philippines, they have illnesses like tuberculosis they've got to worry about. And the story I want to share today talks about a missionary who's working out there. It talks about a man who got sick. Now, the man who got sick, his name was Mar, M-A-R, Mar. Okay. And he was, um, he and his family lived there. I guess he had grown up there in this small, in this town in the Philippines. And one day he got tuberculosis. He went to the mm -hmm. clinic, he got some medicine, started to take it. And, and I guess it was okay at first, but then one time he was with his wife and it started to rain really badly and he needed to help her. So he carried her through the rain. Uh, I suppose they were going home. After that time, his illness started to progressively get worse and worse and worse. And it, his lungs would fill with phlegm and it would just be very difficult for him to breathe. Well, one of our missionaries over there, the missionaries of Jesus for Asia, he heard about Mar and he said, oh, he told his wife, maybe I should go over there. Maybe I should pray for them. And his wife said, no, wait, 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 just don't go over there right away. She says, if you go and something happens, they'll blame you. So Mar thought and he waited for a day. They waited a day, but then the uncle of Mar came over to the missionaries. Now the missionary's name was Pablito. Pablito. So he came to Pablito and he said, Pablito, will you, will you come pray for Mar? And so then he felt that, okay, the door is open now. So Pablito went over. He looked over and he saw, oh, Mar was in really, really bad shape. But you know who else was there right then? It was a witch doctor, his aunt. Oh. Mar's aunt was a witch doctor and she was doing what witch doctors do to try to heal him. But mm. Mar was not improving. So Pablito said, may I, may I pray for him? And they said, okay, go ahead. I, I guess they assumed that if it's not working here, go ahead and give it a shot. Mm -hmm. So they began praying for him. So uh, I'm sorry, Pablito closed his eyes, began praying for him silently. And when he was done, opened his eyes and Mar started coughing and coughing and coughing. He had a coughing fit. And then he got silent. He went unconscious. Mar went unconscious. And then Mar stopped breathing. Uh -oh. The uncle was there going, Mar has died. Mar has died. Mm -hmm. Well, they're looking down there. But you know, Pablito, he's looking at this and he's thinking, 
And he feels the impression of the Lord, the Holy Spirit, telling him, I can raise him. I can raise Mar. Mm. And mm -hmm. so he gets emboldened. And he says to the family, I believe God can raise him back. Oh, well, the my. uncle was not nearly as convinced. Mar was mm. sitting there, not breathing now, getting cold, mm. his extremities growing stiff. Mm -hmm. And so his uncle actually started to undress him to prepare his body for burial. Wow. Prepare his body for burial. About this time, another one of our missionaries came over and she started singing. Mm. And Pablito once again felt impressed. I can raise him. Mm. God telling him, I can raise him. Wow. And so he said to the family, do you folks believe that God could raise him from the dead? Do you believe? Now what they said, I don't want to misquote. So I'm going to read it directly, okay? Mm -hmm. If you want him to come back to life, you need to believe with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength in God. Wow. Then God will surely raise him up. Pablito said, but the man's wife didn't answer. So Mars there with the courage of the Lord, he's feeling impressed by the Holy Spirit that he can say this, but, the, but, the, but Mars' wife, not as impressed right now. Mm -hmm. And then the lady missionary who came, her name was Josephine. So then Josephine <laughs> said, if you don't answer, we can't do anything. Wow. And so Pablito mm -hmm. and Josephine, they asked her over and over again. Do you believe, you know, repeatedly. And eventually she said, yes. Oh, wow. And then she said something else. Mar's wife said something else. She made a promise. She said, if my husband comes back to life, then all my family will follow your God. We believe that your God is a living God. Hmm. Well, Pablito prayed for him again. And you know, he said these words, and I wanted once again to quote them as he said them, as was reported in the story. If you, talking about God, if you are the true living God that can raise him from the dead, and this is Pablito's prayer, I believe you can bring him to life. You are the only one who has power. I don't have power to do it. Only you can do it. I have wow. faith. If it is your will, you can raise him from the dead, since you mm -hmm. own our lives. I don't have power, but you can raise him in order for them to see that you are God who we can turn to. Amen. Wow, that's a powerful prayer. Yes, it is. The Holy Spirit was giving Pablito encouragement that he can say this. And so he said it. He just said it. And do you know what happened next? Yeah. <laughs> the most amazing thing. Mar stood up Mar yes. stood up and said, I am Praise well, God. I am wow. well, I am not sick anymore. Hmm. The man who was dead right before them stood up and declared, I am not sick. They said, Mar, what happened? He said, a bright light came down and I woke up. Hmm. It feels like I've been in a very deep sleep. And they were all amazed. Now, of course... Pablito turned over to the wife and said, you know, you made a promise. <laughs> you, you know, you made a promise. And you know, she kept the promise. She and her family began attending church. Praise the Lord. They gave the man some food and uh, he was coming back. And it, the, the, you know, you can imagine the whole atmosphere changed when this happened. It was totally amazing. Wow. Now, let me add this detail for you. <laughs> well, actually, there was two details I want to add. One is when Mar came back to life, he, he was like, I'm well, I'm well. And then he started going like, where's my clothes? <laughs> because they had, started, right. <laughs> they had started to prepare his, so he found his clothes. And, what are you doing? And, yeah, so you can imagine. But the second wow. thing that they noted in the story was that Mar had died at 3 p.m. And he came back to life at 5 p.m. For Jeez. two hours, he had been laying there, not breathing, hmm. dead. Wow. This is one of the most amazing stories I've heard. Yes. And wow. uh, once again, let me say this was from the Jesus for Asia newsletter. And it was story was written by Jonalyn Martino, Martina Martiano. And so we appreciate very much them allowing us to share this story. Uh, it's, you know, we serve a powerful God, don't we? Amen. We sure do. We sure yeah. do. Yeah. But that's not the end of the stories. We've got more stories to tell, Saidi. Mm -hmm. Now might be a good time to take a break. Okay. So let's take a break, <laughs> folks, and we'll be right back with more amazing stories of God's power and His love. Stay with us. Okay. 
Better Life Broadcasting is a viewer-supported Christian media ministry that offers streaming programming via apps on various devices. Please visit blbn.org to support Better Life or to get more information. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Hello and welcome back to this episode of Stories of Faith. Joining me via video link is Sayidi Rodriguez. Sayidi, are you still with us? I'm still here. <laughs> Very good. We just told an amazing story of God's power to resurrect the dead, but we're not done yet. We've got other stories, but Sayidi, before we get into the other stories, can I share something with you? Because as Please. I think about the wonder and power and majesty of God, I am often drawn to nature. I see things in nature and they just amaze me. The other day we were out for a staff walk. We take a little walk sometimes around the facility um, to get a little exercise. And as we were out there, guess what I heard from above? The loud honking of, I believe, Canadian, Canada, uh, Canada geese, I think was what they called them. Oh, uh -huh. And there was a huge flock of them and they were coming over, oh. but they were doing the most unusual thing. They were circling. And then, and so I was so amazed the first time I just stood up in awe and watched them. And then I said to myself, oh, I wish I had videotaped that. But you know, God sent them around in circles. I'm telling you, he must have done that for me because he brought them back around and I was able to get my video camera out, uh, my phone camera, wow. and take these pictures that you're seeing right now. It was just Very the most nice. amazing sight. They are beautiful creatures and that God can get them air yeah. uh, airborne is amazing to me. But that's the kind and of God that we serve. When was it that you recorded this? This was just a few days ago. I remember you posted um, this on Facebook and I mm -hmm. thought to myself, wow, you know, that same day we went on a walk and we saw some geese as well. I don't know if it's Canadian geese or, but I thought, oh, look, we were able to see the same beautiful creatures from God. <laughs> yeah. So I'm glad I'm able to, because, because we recorded it, I'm able to share it with the audience now. It's just a wonderful Amen. thing. Let us praise the Lord for what he's done. Amen. Now, Sayuri. You have some things happening over in your part of the country that show the Lord is working there too, and that you wanted to share with us. Can you do that right now? God is doing amazing things here in Mississippi. You know, the, the churches that we have, um, two churches, we decided to, to do the 40 days of prayer. It's this book that we have that talks about prayer and preparation for Jesus' second coming. And so it's divided in 40 days. And mm. The way that we do it is at church, we decided, okay, here are the books. So everybody got a book. And then we were to find a prayer partner and we are to call each other, you know, and talk about what we read during the day and also pray. And we're supposed to have a list of at least five people. And everybody started with five. Now we have tons of people on our list and we're supposed to pray for this specific people for 40 days. And so we did that on both churches. And so it's so exciting to see what the Lord is doing. You know, that we have seen the hand of God answering prayers constantly. So let me just tell you a couple of them really fast. There was this one lady who had her sister on her list and she was praying for her sister and praying for her sister. And one day in talking to her sister on the phone, the sister says, you know, so, hey, how things are going over there? And she goes, good, good. You know, I'm doing this book. And she talks about the 40 days book and the lady goes, wow. And this is a lady that is not really inclined to, um, religious things, anything that has to do with God. And mm -hmm. so she goes, wow, you know, that sounds really interesting. I would love to do something like that. That would be nice. Oh, good that you're doing it. And then the sister that is praying for her, she decides to ask her, would you like to do this with me? I could send you the book and we can be prayer partners. The sister says yes. And mm. so she sends her the book and they start praying together and reading the book together. Amazing. So here's um, another one, which is just a couple of days ago, we had uh, Hurricane Ida mm -hmm. and everybody's praying at church. So we were all praying as well that God would protect us, both churches. One of the churches, the smaller church, is the one that was closer to where it was going to be. And God protected us. Hurricane just went over and did not do any damage on um, any of our churches. Anybody, nobody was hurt. And we oh, were just praying Lord. for everybody who did get hurt, but God protected us. Um, 
One other prayer request is a little girl doing the 40 days of prayer had been praying for two family members that she really, really would love for them to come to know the Lord. And yet she had not heard, she hasn't heard from them in years. And all of a sudden, last night, um, she got a text from one of the family members saying, hey, I love you. I just wanted to send this text to let you know that I love you. And also let you know, I don't know why, but I just need to let you know that your prayers are working. Just <laughs> like that. And just amazing things are happening over here in answer to prayer. Uh, it's beautiful to see the revival that it's happening at our churches. You know, Saidi, it's good to, have a, to see miracles. It's good to have our prayers answered. But how much more special is it to have a relationship with God? When He is your Father, when He is your confidence, mm -hmm. somebody you can trust in, somebody you can lean against when you are so tired, that is the precious part. Now, the other Amen. parts, the answers to prayer, those are like icing on the cake. I mean, they come because He loves us. But, but exactly. folks, I would encourage you to have that time of prayer. Make God mm. your best friend, your bestest yes. friend. Yeah. Yes. Well, yes. Saidi, I had something to share. You know, we invite our viewers to call in and, uh, excuse me, write in or visit our webpage and what have you. Well, we received somebody who wanted to share what the Lord had recently done for them from Brazil. Mm -hmm. I sent you that email, so you've seen it. But I yes, wanted to share it with our friends gold. real quick now. And then afterwards, you've got a great story that I'll kind of book, yes. bookend our, the story I told at the beginning. But let me read this real yes. quick. I have taken her story, and I've shortened it because of the time for television, but I've kept the, the basics of the story. So here's how it goes. She had written us and said, I'm Gabriela from Brazil. And I found Stories of Faith on YouTube exactly a month ago. By the way, friends, we've got our episodes on YouTube. If you want to see the other ones you might have missed. I've been watching all the programs since number one, and I just finished 58. And I've been hitting <laughs> the thumbs up button, which we also appreciate. Um, I'd like to know, uh, I'd like you to know that your program brings peace to my soul and the stories are so uplifting. Thank you. To God be the glory. Praise and that's the key Amen. right there. Could you do these yes. miracles, Sayuri? No. Can I no. do them? No. We are mm -hmm. merely reporting what God does. His power. Exactly. Yes. Okay. And then she says, I'd like to share this story with you. Listen to this lady. I got two chocolate bonbons at a church youth service. And since I'm quitting eating candies, I decided <laughs> to give them to someone else. I'm an English oh. and as English as a foreign language teacher. And there's this cleaner at school and her name is, and then she says the name, I'll leave it out for privacy. Last Saturday, she came to mind during the day and I thought, I'm going to give this chocolate to her. <laughs> when I was at church, she came to my mind again. And then I told God, okay, Lord, I'm going to give the chocolate to her, but I'd like to put a piece of paper with a Bible verse written on it inside the chocolate box. Oh, right after, right after saying that to, to saying that to God, I mean, instantly, she says, this verse came to mind. Okay. Here's the verse that God flashed in her mind. The verse says, and it's from Isaiah 41, for I, the Lord, your God will hold your right hand saying to you, Fear not, I will I help you. Yeah, mm -hmm. Isaiah 41, 13. So she says, then I wrote the Bible verse and put it in the chocolate box and tied a ribbon around the box. The following Monday, I went to school and when I saw her in the kitchen, I said to her, close your eyes and show me the palms of your hand. When she did, I gave her the chocolate box and I said that I was at church and I felt from God to give it to her. And I said mm. that there was a Bible verse in it. And I could see that there were tears in her eyes. We hugged Aww. and I left the kitchen. Later on that day during recess time, she came to me crying. And she said that the Bible verse I wrote her was given by the Holy Spirit. She also said, this morning I prayed to God. Yesterday I went to a place I know I shouldn't have gone to. And I knew I should have gone to church instead. I was so sad and I repented. And I've been asking God for answers lately. I was feeling forgotten by God. I prayed this morning, God, please don't forsake me. Please hold mm -hmm. my hand. Don't forsake mm -hmm. me. And this Bible verse was exactly the answer to her prayer. She mm -hmm. wanted to make sure that God was holding her hand. He was telling her that he was holding her right hand. And that, uh, and that was all she needed that day. And this Amen. is all we need every day. We need to make sure that God Amen. is holding our hands. And uh, isn't that amazing? 
God impressed her it's to give her the Bible beautiful. verse and a direct answer to this lady's prayer. She said, Lord, I need you oh. to hold my hand. And he, wrote, and he wrote her back and through the Bible, I am holding your hand. Just beautiful. Oh, beautiful. We appreciate people when they... <laughs> we appreciate when people send in these stories and share with us. I've got so many to share. We'll hopefully share in future mm. programs. Now, Saidi, you have a very impressive story to share with our, uh, with our group here. Why don't you go ahead? Yes. This story happened uh, almost 10 years ago. And it happened when we were in California in one of our churches. We were having an evangelistic meeting. And at the beginning of the meeting, we decided, you know, we want to reach as many people as possible. We want to tell them about Jesus. So we had um, a room where we would do interpreting uh, to Spanish. Mm -hmm. And people would have radios and they would put their headphones and, and we would interpret the sermons. And then one day, this beautiful, sweet sister from the church, her name is Kelly. She came by and she said, um, Pastor, she told my husband, I want to interpret to the people in my country. There's a family, she said, a few hours from here, and they would love to come to the meetings. But one, they're not able to. It's too far for them. And two, uh, they don't speak English. And so if I could interpret for them as you're preaching on the phone, that would be great. And my husband was like, praise the Lord. Yes, do it. And mm. so she's from Laos. And so that started happening every night. You know, she started interpreting over the phone. She would hear my husband on, you know, on one ear uh, with the microphone and everything. And then she would interpret on the phone uh, to Laos language. And maybe like the second or third night, she said, hey, this is going big because what they're doing now is I'm interpreting and then there's a person here who is listening to me, but that person is also calling people in Laos. Oh. She's calling, you know, this person who was a pastor over there was calling the people at Laos to interpret the messages that were happening every night at our church. So mm. he said, he, he told her, you know, every night there's more people and more people that are gathering over there in Laos to listen to the messages. And we were just praising the Lord for this. Well, towards the last meetings that we were having, one day she came over, Kelly, and said, I just have to tell you what God is doing. She said, you got to you gotta hear this. She said, I was getting ready to, to come to the meetings and I get ready like early during the day. And I start by calling the pastor to see if he's ready to do the interpreting and mm -hmm. he wouldn't answer. And so she called and called and called and no answer, no answer. So she decided to call some friends and say, Hey, can you go check on the pastor? Because he's supposed to interpret tonight and I just want to make sure. So they say, yeah, no problem. They went to look for the pastor and then she gets a call and in the call they're crying and they're saying, Oh, Sister Kelly, Sister Kelly, uh, pastor dead, pastor dead. The pastor had died. And she says, no, 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 no. And she, they, they're saying, yeah, he's laying down. And, you know, the paramedics are here and he's, he's dead. And she's like, no, pastor not dead. Pastor's not dead. <laughs> and then she tells them, you know how you were talking about Pablito and how God put it in his heart? Well, he put it in this sister's heart as well, this sister Kelly. And she says, Put the phone on his ear. And they're like, mm. Pastor dead. And she's like, no, put the phone on his ear. And so they did that. And they put the phone on his ear. And then she starts praying. And in mm. her prayer, he, she tells God, God, he can't die. There's people in Laos. And they need to hear the message. Please, they need to hear the message of the Lord. And so she says, okay, call me back in five, ten minutes. And she hangs up. <laughs> and five or ten minutes go by, and she calls back. And do you know who answered the phone? Oh, I bet the audience can guess. The it pastor. was the pastor. The pastor answered the phone. Actually, you know what? I, I, I just remember. It was not a few minutes after that. It was two, three hours after that she said that he was dead for like two or three hours. And oh. He calls and he's like, uh, you know, praising the Lord because he knew what had just happened. Um, I don't remember right now. It's been a while if he interpreted that night or if he was somebody else. But I do remember 
that that Sabbath, he made the effort to drive all the way from where he was to come to our church to praise the Lord for what he had done because he was dead and God raised him up. Wow. You know, Saidi, the more we do these kinds of stories, the more I see Bible times never stopped. The Lord no, is doing no. miraculous, incredible things today, just like he did in the Bible. Why would he stop? Amen. He wants Amen. to reach people. He wants to reach souls. In that one story I began with, you know, he, the, um, the evangelist, the um, missionary was saying, Lord, show them that you are the one. Show them that you exactly. are the one. And uh -huh. so it was for God's glory. And that's why we share and these stories. And this lady, yes. Mm -hmm. This lady was saying, God, he needs to reach to the people in Laos. You know, they were yeah. get, getting together. That was the whole point of her wanting to interpret. She just wanted her people, the people, to know about God. And God yeah. honored her faith. Yeah. I see, friends, if you want to see the Lord working, one of the best ways to do it is to become involved in evangelism. Work for the salvation of other people and pray to, to the Lord about individual peoples that you're especially concerned about and ask him to show himself to them. Ask him to manifest himself to them in miraculous ways and just see what he does. Because the Lord is waiting for us to reach out to other fellow humans to help bring them home. And that's our, that's our privilege. Well, friends, we hope you've enjoyed these stories. They're miraculous, they're wonderful. They show God's love for us. But if you have a story that you want to share, you can visit our webpage at blbn.org, blbn.org. And we'd love to hear from you. Visit our webpage. We have streaming video 24 hours a day. You can watch our channels off of our webpage. We also have some free apps on uh, Apple phones, iPads, and uh, Roku, Apple TV. Anyway, friends, thank you for joining us and let us encourage, be encouraged by the words. Give your heart to God, do what he says, and you too can have your very own story of faith.